In June of 2024, Kathy and I met my niece Janae and my brother Paul in Coeur d'Alene for a quick weekend get-together in the Northern Idaho Panhandle. Northern Idaho is not at all what we expected it to be. We brought an embarrassing amount of camera gear to photograph all the animals inhabiting the untouched wilds of the inland Pacific Northwest. We were certain we'd see all kinds of wildlife, putting to shame what we could find around our house in the suburbs of Los Angeles. We did not find that to be the case. All of the animals shown here are from our own yard in the Santa Monica Mountains. What we did find in Idaho was a few ducks, geese, and various assorted moose statues. Instead of staying at Quaint Lodge, our resort would have been at home in Las Vegas. Our room had a 15th floor view of the Coeur d'Alene Marina looking south to the giant lake. The resort had any amenity you can think of except for a casino, which was down the road in the local Native American reservation lands. It certainly would never be called a quaint lodge, although it was named number five in Travel and Leisure's 20 surprisingly affordable luxury hotels around the world in April of 2023. We think they got that right. Instead of empty spaces, we had crowds wherever we went. The temperatures were warm, meaning that we never had to put on warm weather clothes. Most of all, instead of having moose burgers and beaver sausage with beer for all our dinners, we were treated to what can only be called fine dining experiences. We stayed at the Coeur d'Alene Resort, right at the northern end of the lake, enjoying a spectacular view of the lake over the marina, surrounded by what is touted by the builders as the world's longest floating boardwalk. We have no idea who keeps such records, but we had no reason to doubt the claim, particularly since the builders of the resort put their signature on the claim right there at the start of the record-breaking structure. After considerable effort, Paul had managed to get four spots for dinner at a restaurant called Candle in the Woods, a little over a half hour drive north of the small town called Athol. It's located in a building that used to be a steakhouse and only takes 16 reservations in an evening. Again, it certainly wasn't what we expected it to be. Candle in the Woods turns the conventional tasting menu notion on its head by offering over a dozen courses paired with wines, while Chef Dave leads us through the story behind each course and coaches us on how to best enjoy each of the pairings. Think of it as a L'Atelier Joel Robuchon with a more entertaining food guide, if you want to put this in real food nerd terms. We knew the dinner was going to be memorable when the amuse-bouche was a couple of prosciutto-wrapped asparagus spears with a cream filling adorned with local huckleberries, coupled with a filet mignon s'more, accented by a sparkling wine. What followed was a tuna tartare stack with avocado on a Himalayan salt block with a delicious blush wine. Since Kathy is allergic to avocado, they made her a special tuna stack with eggplant and squash to avert her allergy. The courses kept coming with very canny wine pairings, only interrupted by two intermezzos or recesses, where we adjourned to the outdoor patio or upstairs game room while the fantastic staff reset the table for the courses that followed. Other courses included smoked diver scallop tarts, bacon ice cream with meringue, tempura prawns with ravioli and a cream pesto sauce, perfectly cooked steak, mango peach sorbet with a playful mystery ingredient, flaming lamb lollipops, and a French toast cream dessert paired with ice wine. The quality of the food and wine pairings were made unforgettable by the interaction with Chef Dave and his impeccable team. The wine pairings were great in that they didn't try to be pretentious reserved wines that were meant to be sipped alone. Instead, they were deliciously paired to the course at hand, which was a refreshing change from so many places where they're trying too hard and still getting it wrong. Enjoying the meal at a communal table allowed us to interact with the other patrons, giving the whole evening a delightful extended family feel. This went into my memory banks right up there with any other dining experience, but in the most unexpected place. I was sad to see the evening end. There was consolation in that we learned several techniques that eased making future reservations, including where to look for last minute cancellations, among other tips I'll leave for you to discover if you visit. The next morning, we signed up for a short lake sightseeing cruise. Kathy, Janae, and I took a short hike, taking in the views from the insanely crowded Tubbs Hill before we boarded our boat. Janae got the bright idea to test one of the suggested techniques to see if we really could get seats at Candle in the Woods again on a Saturday evening. Lo and behold, it worked. We were set to enjoy another meal in our newly found gem. We knew they changed up the menu daily, so we knew that we weren't going to get a repeat of the night before. Our boat cruise did a loop over the North Bay area of the lake, pointing out some of the huge houses around the lake 
in giving us some detailed descriptions of the various projects in the lake created by the owners of the largest house on the lake. We heard about the backgrounds on the resort in which we were staying, the condos that were stated to be the nicest in the western United States, the famous golf course along with its floating green that could be changed moving the yardage of the hole. We sat with a longtime resident of the area who gave us additional less hyperbolic background in the area. It was a great way to spend the morning and get a feel for the lake. After our cruise, we wandered around town to see the sights in the afternoon. That evening, we headed back to Athol for round two in Candle of the Woods. We had another memorable dinner with Chef Dave and his son Connor as well as the rest of the team. In addition to the amuse-bouche and tuna dishes, we were treated to a new recipe on quesadilla that was delicious. This was followed by a trio of salmon, cold sous vide side melon, and steelhead. We returned to our trusty smoked diver scallops, ice cream palate cleanser, intermezzo number one, tempura prawns, pork tenderloin, steak, and a delicious tort for the dessert. Finished off with gouda, a chocolate bite, and a 10-year-old tawny port. The pairing wines for the courses included a delicious Albarino from Spain, Shannon Blanc from South Africa, and even an outstanding Tempranillo from Idaho itself. Wow. We got to talking wine with Chef Dave after dinner before getting to taste a few wines from Chef's personal collection. It was one of the most memorable dining experiences of my life that even exceeded the great prior evening. We can't recommend Candle in the Woods more highly and can't wait to go back. I really hope Chef Dave visits Southern California so I can share some of the wines from my cellar with him. For our next adventure, we're going to rent one of these boats and head out and uh, explore the lake. So if the next broadcast is from underwater, you'll know why. The next day, we decided to explore the massive Lake Coeur d'Alene ourselves by renting a boat at the marina. We had hoped to spot some bald eagles or possibly even moose feeding in the shallows of the lake. Much to our disappointment, we saw much less wildlife than we normally see at home, which was completely unexpected, however made sense due to the crowded nature of the area. That said, the lake is gorgeous, and we really enjoyed cruising the bays of the lake and taking in the amazing lodges built all around the lake. We would recommend the boat rental to anyone going into the area. Our final dinner was at Beverly's, right at the resort itself. It enjoys a great seventh floor view of the lake and has an impressive wine list, including quite a collection of prestigious expense account wines. The food was quite good, but the meal just didn't measure up to the dining experiences we'd treated ourselves to during the prior two evenings. The next morning, we drove back to Spokane and took the short two-hour flight home. All in all, Northern Idaho isn't at all what we expected. While the amount of wildlife and density of visitors were disappointing, the great dinners and enjoyable excursions on the lake make it a great destination for a weekend away. Costs of everything were quite high, but so is the quality. We're really looking forward to going back. If you have any suggestions of things to do in Northern Idaho, please leave them in the comments below. If you want to be notified of other videos, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.